So as a quick disclaimer, Volume 6 of Rising of the Shield Hero will be covering, of course, parts of Season 2 of the Light Novel. This is definitely one of those weird volumes because there is some stuff in this volume that I'm very confident that won't be in Season 2, and I'll get into why, but again, this is just my opinion. And then, of course, there are definitely some parts that are obviously going to be in Season 2, going based on what is in this volume and, of course, what has already been showcased with the announcement of Season Season 2 and 3, it is very obvious that this will be where Season 2 will be picking up from. But overall, that is just a quick disclaimer. Let's get into the review. So Volume 6, I feel like it has some highs and it has some lows. There are definitely some parts that I really loved and there were some parts that I definitely felt were lacking. I definitely overall enjoyed the volume as a whole and I really loved some of the intricate stuff that was going on. The character power, more development when it came to characters that I liked, let's just say. And there were definitely some moments where I just had to stop reading it for a while, walk away from my desk, take a breather, go outside, look at the stars and remember that there are people that exist that are just like these characters particularly of course the spear the bow and the sword because these three people are the most frustrating people that i have ever met and i mean captain obvious they've been like that since the very beginning but it's just astounding the amount of ignorance and the amount of hypocrisy that still continues to just always boil my blood and the ending to the volume was kind of funny because they end up going missing and I'm just kind of like, eh, does it really matter at this point? I mean, they got so ahead of themselves. They started lying. They started manipulating. But then they're sitting there demanding that the shield hero trust them while they're then screaming at him going, we don't trust you. You're a liar. You're a liar. But you have to trust us. It's like, you're the ones lying though. And he's not. And you're telling him to trust you, but you don't want to trust him. It's like, oh, I just, blood boiled, blood boiled. I had to take a breather. It's a good volume though. Nonetheless, as much as they frustrated me, I really love some of the intricate systems. I did find some of the power progression stuff a little bit boring, mainly when it was getting into the training stuff. I would almost call this a bit of a training volume, at least for at least one third of it. The first, I would say, part of it, which is at least one third of it, focuses on the new party member, as I'd like to call her, the special individual that likes to ball her eyes out all the time. The girl, of course, in season two that ended up getting booted out of the Bow Heroes party. In the light novels, it goes into a lot more of her mindset and why she was kicked out, and it goes into sort of everything that transpired and how it led to the part where she's floating in the water. And I'm not going to say certain words for obvious reasons, but there were definitely some heavy themes in this volume, and I can now see why it wasn't in season one of the anime, because if you thought the stuff that happened at the start was controversial, there was definitely some other stuff that would have been not as controversial, but I think it was easier for them to kind of brush that under the carpet and be like, okay, that didn't exist in the anime. But if you read the light novels, you'll learn a lot about this particular girl that ends up joining the S.H.I.E.L.D. Heroes party. She definitely went through some traumatic events, and she joins up with the Bow Party because, of course, she was rescued, a particular mission that was gone over in detail where, of course, the Bow Hero went to a town, pretended to be this normal adventurer, and then ended up freeing this town from some very bad people that kept raising the taxes, and, of course, the town just went into complete disarray afterwards. But one of the members of the family that, of course, ran that town, of course, ended up joining the Bow Hero Party, which is her. And of course, she wasn't the most, I would say, intelligent one in the group, mainly because I blame the bow hero for this. She was more suited for range-based attacks, particularly in casting. But of course, the bow hero wanted another melee user, so he forced her to go in a melee direction, which went against what she was more accelerating in. So it made her weaker because the bow hero wanted a melee user and then went against what was her strengths and then got angry that she was weak. Do you see the hypocrisy in it? He's complaining that she's weak, but he's the reason why she's weak. That is one of the reasons why she was booted out of the party. The other one was because in the light novels and in the previous volume, she was the major helping hand in, of course, helping the shield hero fight against Glass and the other two. And because of that, bow hero's party really didn't like the fact that she was shining a lot more 
uprightly and getting credit for doing positive things than what they were. They wanted all the glory. They wanted the greed of looking good. And so they ended up putting some things in place to basically get her booted out. They broke something of the bow hero and then framed her for it. And even though the bow hero knew about it, he just went along with it because it's like, oh, well, let's be complete and utter jack wagons and make her actually contemplate certain things that you don't want people to contemplate on because we wanted to throw her out of the party because, well, we don't want her anymore. They treated her absolutely terribly. It was horrible the way they treated her. And that is something that was dabbled into in Volume 5 in a lot more detail. And that is something that wasn't even in the anime as well. There are definitely a lot of little things that aren't in the actual anime itself. And that's why I'm mentioning that I don't believe this is ever going to be brought up in Season 2. Because they basically brushed over it in Season 1. Basically after Shield Hero defeats Glass and the other two, he ends up sort of having a bit of a celebration at the pub. And that's where they find her in the water, basically sinking. And so they end up rescuing her, and then she goes, oh, I've been kicked out of the party. In the light novel for Volume 6, it goes into a massive amount of detail at how and why it all transpired. So the point where the shield hero is the one that ends up confronting him, interrogating the bow hero, getting into a big fight, and everything just sort of spirals out of control. And even the spear hero plays a part in it as well. I wouldn't say he's in a negative aspect, but he definitely plays the chicken route where he was sort of involved, but then wanted to pull out very quickly because, of course, the girl that was part of the party had a lot of feelings towards the bow hero. I don't understand why she would ever keep her feelings towards him with the way he treated her, but I definitely saw a lot of hints at things that are to come. But it really shows just how self-absorbed each of the heroes are, and it's very obvious that they have a lot of issues as well from their past lives. And I mean, this isn't spoiler, this was just something that was brought up in Volume 6, that the spear hero had a bit of a confrontation with a girl that ended up knocking him off because she was a little bit cuckoo. So he has a bit of a tendency to get a little bit touchy-goey when it comes to girls that are very clingy. And that was something that this girl has towards the bow hero. As I said, I don't think this is going to be in Season 2 in any way, shape, or form. Even though in Season 1, it kind of just brushes over it. It gets her in the party, and then it's kind of done and dusted very quickly. I don't think they'll do any backtracking in Season 2 with that scene. I think they'll just kind of leave it at that and move on. They do end up having a second meeting as well, where they go over stuff and try to share more knowledge, and the shield hero is trying to sort of tell them, hey, these systems that you told me about, they all work, you just need to believe in it, kind of believe in the heart of the cards, they need to believe the system is real, and then they're able to use that system, but of course, the first thing that the other three do is basically go, oh, you're cheating, which to be honest, accusing someone of cheating is completely pointless in that situation, because don't you want to have the greatest advantage against the enemies? Like, it's all about sharing knowledge and working to the best of your ability and making each other as strong as possible. There's no cheating in this. You're just using the systems that are available, but somehow they think he's cheating. It's like, well, you're better than us, so it's obviously cheating. It's like, well, no... He's just using the knowledge and the tools available in front of him. But again, they don't listen to any reasoning. They just basically treat it like a game. And the fact that each of the systems that they ended up telling, of course, Shield Bro about, he ends up able to use. And he tries to say to him, hey, they work. Use them. And then again, they don't believe him. They're telling him to trust them but then they don't want to trust him. And it just ends up in the same way. They have a meeting. Nothing gets resolved and things just kind of fall apart. And there's definitely a lot of scenes in this where I was just like, whoa, really? That was said? Particularly with the Queen, and then of course Spear Hero, and they're all having an argument about certain things going on, and them being forced into training, because it's obvious that it isn't gear orientated, and it isn't level orientated. It is obvious that they're lacking A, experience, B, a proper mindset, and C, they're just missing systems that they need to be stronger. And so they're not listening to reason. So the queen basically says, okay, you're all going into training and they don't want to go. And they're at the point where they're like five-year-old kids having a tantrum at a supermarket because they didn't get to have that lolly that mummy and daddy didn't buy him. And they basically just have a tantrum on the floor, cracking the poopa loopers going, wow, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. It's like, okay, screaming like a toddler isn't going to fix the problem. You need to go to school and learn how to fight like a good little boy. You, you're 
completely and utterly useless spear hero, bow hero, sword hero. They end up having a tantrum and of course, you know who, ends up saying a remark that actually kind of threw me back a little bit because the spear hero actually considered it, I think, for a short moment where she mentions about maybe, you know, removing the queen from position, e.g. death. And I was just like, whoa, whoa, she went there. And it, it almost worked. You could almost see that the other three were considering it. They were willing to turn against the queen because they weren't getting what they wanted, which was basically them just being able to run around and be completely and utterly useless to everyone and then think that it's all about gaining levels and gear because that was the thing that they thought that was holding them back was levels and gear. Even though, yes, Shield Hero's team is slightly better leveled, even though his group is slightly smaller as well, again, he doesn't have that greater gear either i mean they do have better gear their levels are a little bit wonky i would say if you tallied them all up based on party member numbers they would probably be slightly higher again i'd, I'd have to look into the exact specific numbers but i would say on average each of the other party members are probably slightly stronger than the shield here if we're looking from a party by party standpoint they are probably stronger than shield hero just because of numbers alone and probably gear. But the fact that the shield hero has a really well advanced shield now, that probably gives him a greater advantage on the fact that they are higher level. But as, as I said before, because their party is much more small, it makes it a bit more difficult. They're much more specialized, I would say. And it also hints in this volume as well that they can go beyond what they would call the level cap. There's meant to be a second ceremony. It's pretty obvious once they reach a certain power point, there is going to be some big breakthroughs. And I'm very interested to see where they go from there. But it's obvious that the other three heroes need some form of experience, training, in some way, shape or form. But they don't listen. They just constantly argue they constantly bicker between each other and that's when a incident happens which is of course the spirit turtle which is where they end up running off and they end up disappearing completely disappearing and completely useless and that's where it's left up to shield hero to try and piece everything together and that's when they end up getting into a fight with the turtle itself and i felt that fight was a little bit lacking it wasn't that it was too long-winded or it was just too short it just felt a little bit lacking. The fight just didn't have as much flair in it as the other fights with Glass and the other two adventurers slash heroes. It just didn't have that same zah excitement that I got from it. Also with the training as well, because there was definitely a lot of exposition dumping when it came to energy and all that. I got a little bit confused when reading it because they were going over mana, then actual stamina, and then energy and spiritual energy. There was definitely a lot of stuff going on and it might be something that I might need to reread again and go into better detail, but it was a little bit boring for me. It wasn't a bad volume, it was just there were definitely some lacking components. I just felt like it didn't have the same energy as the other volumes have, and I have heard that volume 7 has some parts in there that is very similar. We'll just have to wait and see. I hope when they do it in the anime, they put a little bit more flair into it or maybe skip some of the boring stuff. Because the sort of training arc in this volume was very boring and very tedious. But I have a feeling it's kind of important to go over it as well. To just show how impatient and how self-absorbed the other heroes are. But overall, I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you read this volume? What are your favourite parts about it? And what are you looking forward to in Season 2 of Rising of the Shield Hero? Currently, there isn't any actual release dates yet of course season two and three has been announced but we just have to wait for official announcements on the release date if and when there is i will definitely announce it on the channel but overall love to know your thoughts but if you like this video hit the like button subscribe for more anime content and i will see you beautiful nerds in the next video